Hi hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today I want to just talk a little bit about this this here memory kit that I picked up. This is not going to be like a nice organized review like I've done for memory kits in the past, mostly because I've had this kit for ages. It's very boring. It doesn't really, it's not very special. It's, it, it's like, it... It's it's a boring kit of memory. It does bore. It does memory settings that you would expect of of, of a you know, well a decent B, a Samsung B die kit. But the thing is, this is a uh, so this is a HyperX thirty six hundred CL seventeen rated memory kit. So there's your XMP like your primary XMP profile, and uh, yeah. So this this speed bin right here is I think even now this is still technically guaranteed Samsung B die. Now the only reason why I'm saying that is because uh, I'm not sure that at 3600 megahertz it's possible to bin uh, CJR into doing TRCD lower than 19. Um, but I'm not sure about that. So there is a chance that you know over time we'll start seeing this exact uh, spec turning up with CJR ICs, either as CJR gets better, or maybe Micron will come out with something that also does uh, a TRCD18 at 3600, and then then, th then this will be a, you know, just you'll get whatever happens to be on the factory floor that day when your, your kit is produced. But uh, yeah, so I picked this kit up because it was cheap. That's basically the main justification for why I own it. Um, and the idea was essentially that this is... Uh, like at the time that I was buying this, this was significantly cheaper than buying a like a 3200 CL14 kit. Now it is worth noting that 3600 CL17 is technically a looser bin than a 3200 CL14. So if you go 3600 divided by 17, that's a lower value than you get if you do 3200 divided by 14. And this is not how you calculate latency, but this is a good way to just compare um, sort of like latency scores, right? The higher this value is, the better the memory kit. So a 3600 CL17 is basically equivalent to a, is like roughly equivalent to something like a CL15, right? Because like a 3200 CL15 essentially. So this is technically a you know, well, this is potentially a worse bin than 3200CL14, or at least it should be less less consistent um, in terms of the like quality that you get when you buy these memory sticks. So that's kind of the main concern with it. But uh, the great news is it's still B die. It's B die that at least does 3600 megahertz. Which you might be like, wait, there's B die that doesn't do 3600 megahertz? Yeah, there is. Um, you get it when you buy like random green PCB OEM sticks or B die rated at 2400 megahertz. If you buy that stuff, there's a pretty good chance the the kit won't even do 3600 reliably. So, like, my experience with well. My experience, like, I've had one kit of, like, really low, low, low bin B die, and I've seen uh, some somebody else test, like, a bunch of green PCB OEM Samsung sticks, and they, they, they were a bit more successful with theirs than I was, but it was still god-awful trash memory, like, I don't know why you'd ever want to buy that. I don't, like, it's 30 quid, but at that point, you might as well just be buying, like, crucial, you know, cheap crucial memory or something, you, like... At that point, you may as well just buy something else that isn't B-Die because that B-Die is so bad. It doesn't, like, it. it's awful. It's just really, really bad. So, anyway, but with this, you at least get the guarantee that it'll do 3600CL17. And uh, it is actually overclockable quite significantly, at least in the, in the case of the kit I got. So, yeah. I guess let's move on to sort of the other stuff that I want to share. So before we get into sort of the pricing stuff, um, the memory stick uses an A2 PCB layout. So that's, you know, you have your two groups of memory chips. This is the best way to check the PCB layout is to just look under the heat spreader and look for the memory chip packages. Um, if you have a memory stick that's dual rank, you'll have memory chip packages on both sides, but this is a stick of Samsung B die. Samsung B die currently is only made in eight gigabit. Um, in the past, I do believe Samsung had like 2 gigabit D-Die, 4 gigabit D-Die, 8, did they? I don't think they had 8 gigabit for DDR3. I'm not sure. But like a lot of memory vendors will actually recycle the, the revision letters uh, for different memory chip sizes, which is how you, for example, like Hynix currently has 4 gigabit AFR, 
which has nothing in common with 8 gigabit AFR. 8 gigabit AFR is bloody awful. 4 gigabit AFR is actually somewhat okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, so this is, you know, 8 gigabit Samsung VDI. These are 8 gig sticks. That tells us it's single rank because you only need 8 memory chips to make a single rank. Um, and so you get all of your memory chips on one side of the stick. And this is an A2 layout because we have these two groups of memory chips on either end of the stick. Instead of having a stick that looks more like this, this is an A1 layout. And the reason why you need to care about this is basically the A1 PCB, at least as far as I... I've heard because I don't actually have any like super high-end A1 memory. Though I guess I should have test like I could test this stick for max frequency. But uh, so basically what I've heard about A1 versus A2 is A1 doesn't clock very high. As in it doesn't do like it seems apparently it walls at like 4600 megahertz or something like that. Um, whereas A2, you can do you can do five gigahertz plus if you know what you're doing with an A2 memory stick, and the memory stick is good, and your CPU is good, and your motherboard is good, and like th th that's the thing about memory overclocking. There's a whole bunch of conditionals. Is like, does your memory suck? Does your motherboard suck? Does your CPU suck? And it's like when all of those things don't suck, and you know exactly what you're doing with everything, then you get good memory overclocks. Otherwise, you're screwed. <laughs> Any one of those things could screw you over. So that's kind of why I really like memory overclocking is fun if you want to if you hate yourself Because you end up doing the same thing over and over and over again expecting different results and the worst part is the results change <laughs> At least if you use an Asus motherboard with the retry button, but um Yeah, no, so this is an A2 PCB. So in terms of actual memory frequency. Yes, these do go very high on memory frequency um, in fact, I've been using them, I actually use them for most of the motherboard uh, memory test data for single rank, um, which that was actually, pre I think that was entirely done with this kit, um, because it's just basically exactly the same as my team group sticks, so it's just like, well, I can choose whichever one and it doesn't really affect the results too much. And they clock up to like 4800 megahertz, no problem if you have a capable motherboard. But again, keep in mind Silicon Lottery, if you buy 10 of these kits, who knows, maybe half of them won't do 4800, but at least the PCB itself should not be uh, restricting the maximum frequency that these can hit. Now, the downside to the A2 PCB is that it apparent, like it has uh, A2 PCB based kits tend not to do 4000 CL, uh, tend not to do 4133 CL12. Now. I'm not sure, you know, how consistent that is because I've also seen a bunch of, like, there's a bunch of screenshots on uh, out there w from people who have, you know, A2 PCB memory sticks doing, like, 4200 CL12. So, you know, it might just be that the A2 memory sticks come in a wider sort of, like, more variance in terms of chip quality just because the PCB is so much better for high frequency that you can kind of whack whatever on there and it'll probably still clock decently as long as it's not completely trash. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, A2, you know, it may, probably won't do like 4133 CL12, but at the same time, I have seen kits of A2 do that and even higher. So I think that's probably just going to be down to binning very, uh, just to you know, binning, uh, binning more so than the PCB itself. Now, what there's definitely true for the PCB is that this PCB, like, well, Asus motherboards, um, well, Asus 2DIM motherboards, it's actually, like, if you have a 4DIM Asus motherboard, this PCB doesn't seem to, at least as far as I know, it doesn't really cause any issues. I wouldn't be able to test it. I don't have a 4DIM Asus motherboard. I don't intend to buy one. They're really overpriced. Um, but, um, uh, Apparently the 4DIM boards don't really have a problem with this this uh, memory layout, but the 2DIM boards absolutely bloody hate this. Um, and I can confirm that because I have a Maximus 11 gene, and uh, because my entire memory con uh, collection is A2 layout, um, which I was kind of hoping that when I was buying this kit it would be A1, but that didn't pan out, did it? Um, but since my entire memory collection is A2, I basically avoid using the Maximus 11 gene because it's just so hard to do anything with A2 memory on that board. Um, like, I can do 4000 CL12 with this kit on the Z390 Dark, no problem. Um, 
I can do 4000 CL12 on the Maximus 11 gene, but it takes like 10 times as much effort to do the same thing. So I just avoid the gene with, with A2 PCBs. So that's kind of the main, main issue with this um, is just, you know, the, this PCB layout really like EVGA is fine with it. MSI is fine with it. Gigabyte motherboards only come in T topology and the ITX board really isn't that great at memory overclocking. So I wouldn't really consider that one. Um, gigabyte boards like, because the thing is, if you have four DIM boards, then you can just kind of forget about any memory speed, memory frequency higher than like 4,400. Um, and you can also forget about things like 4,000 CL12 working consistently, except for some rare exceptions. Um, but, um, yeah, so the, like, ba basically, this PCB works fine for daily usage. On Ryzen, it doesn't really have any issues. Um, it's really just, like, Intel Asus motherboards with two DIMM slots. Those hate this. But everything else is fine, so... Um, yeah, that, that's kind of one thing to keep in mind, uh, to, to consider when, uh, well, and it's only really an issue on the Asus boards if you're trying to do 4000 CL12. It's not really an issue if you're trying to run more relaxed settings. Um, so like 3866 CL12 doesn't generally cause that many issues, but 4000 CL12, massive issues um, with the A2 layout and, and higher speeds just get worse. But um, with other boards, this actually works just fine. For daily usage, it doesn't really have any impact as far as I'm concerned. So, um, yeah, that's that's the memory lay layout on these. Um, here, here we have it without the red squares. So, um, what else did I want to cover? Oh, and then I guess there's obviously the price point. Oh, and I mean, the, the XMP on this kit, like I really wouldn't buy this kit if you just want to run it on XMP because that right there is kind of awful. Though, well, if you're buying it for Intel, this will run on pretty much everything. That's kind of nice with a, you know, anemic XMP profile like that is, yes, you can whack it onto almost any motherboard and it should work. The downside to it is it's also going to be pretty slow. Um, so I would really like the, the, the reason why I consider this an interesting kit is basically it's cheap. It can overclock. And that's it. <laughs> like it's be it's cheap beat eye, and you can overclock it yourself. So, the the XMP profile isn't really the, the main concern there. Um, and so here you can see the prices. So this is where I picked the kit up. I tried to look it up on Newegg. Newegg's memory freaking memory section is awful in terms of how it's organized. So I couldn't find the kit. And then I was like, well, screw it. We're not going to do the price comparisons. But basically, what I want to point out is this 3600 CL17 here is 164 quid. Whereas, and at the time when I bought this kit, it was actually a bigger price difference, but this is the cheapest 3200 CL14 kit on Alza right now. And it's, you know, it's more expensive. Uh, admittedly, at this point, Patriot recently came out with these like Viper Steel series memory sticks and like this 4000 CL19 right here. Uh, that's almost certainly B die. And that's a hundred, like, like that's even cheaper. Um, that right there, I have a very strong suspicion is CJR. Okay, so that there, because you see that, that's that's 22. Okay, that's a TRCD of 22. That's probably CJR. But uh, 19, 19 timings, that's that's going to be B-Die. So this at this point is the cheapest option. But at the time that I was buying this kit, this was literally the cheapest B-Die you could get your hands on. That wasn't bottom of the barrel OEM garbage. Um, so, you know, I picked this up. And 3200 CL14 is generally actually more expensive than a 3600 CL17. Even though you can, you know, if you wanted to and you stuck this kit into Ryzen, you can totally do like 3466 at CL... Uh, well, maybe not necessarily CL14, but like, th uh, you know, 3466, 1616, 16 primaries should work. 1615 might work, right, with a, a TRCD1 lower than, than the primaries. Um as well as TRP, one lower than uh, than than CL, um, that could work. So, like, you could probably run settings like that, like 3400, 16, 16, 16. That could probably work on a kit like this, right? And the great thing is this is a tad cheaper than a 3416 or a 3214 or a 3214 because apparently 3214 comes in some very overpriced variants, like, like this one right here. 
right? So when I was buying this kit, the price difference was more like the price difference between like this and this. But yeah, like at the time, this, this Flare X kit was a lot more expensive. So at the time, this was like a good cheap B die option. And even now I'd say, you know, if you're looking for B-Dye just for daily usage, so like a Ryzen daily system or like a Intel gaming system where you don't care about how, like you don't need more than 16 gigs of RAM um, and you're looking for memory and you find some of this like 3600 CL17, uh, you know, like this HyperX kit, not that, <laughs> not that there. I have a friend who bought that. He got a 171919 kit with CJR. But uh, if you get a 3600 17 18 18 kit, that's pretty much still going to be almost, well, that's probably still going to be B-Die at this point. And uh, yeah, you know, it'll overclock pretty well. I mean, my specific sample did, you know, 4,000, uh, let's see, I should, I should maybe try open this in a more bigger resolution. So yeah, you can see right there that, eh. Okay, that did not work out. I wanted to zoom in. So you can see right there, that's actually that HyperX kit. So that did 4,022 megahertz at 121111. 11. Now, admittedly, this was with the CPU on liquid nitrogen on the Z390 Dark. So it's just like, you know, uh, it's not exactly something you would run daily, but it's a rough indication of the kit not being completely trash. Um, so... You know, that, that's kind of nice. But at the same time, also, there's going to be kit to kit variants of I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was upwards of 100 megahertz. So as in once you start raising the voltage and changing your timings, you'd see like, you know, 100 megahertz at the same timings differences. Um, but yeah, mine turned out pretty good. It's pretty cheap. It's a decent, you know, option of uh, DDR4. And the other upside to this memory kit, I guess, is that um, unlike a lot of other, uh, you know, high-end DDR4 kits, which I wouldn't really consider this high-end, I'd consider this more like mid-range. Um, but admittedly, it's still pretty expensive. But one of the upsides to this kit is that the heat spreader isn't ridiculously tall, right? Like if you buy like a G-Skill Trident Z kit or the team group kits or the... Um, well, the Flare X sticks from from um, from G Skill also aren't that tall, but that's another one of those things. Is if you have a tall air cooler, which goes well, a large air cooler, not necessarily tall. The height's fine. It's it's where the front fan, like where where the fin stacks end up. That's a concern. So if you have a large air cooler, this will probably clear it more comfortably than a lot of the other, um, you know, DDR4 out there, which is a which is a which is nice. You know, I mean, why why wouldn't you want your memory to fit under your heatsink, right? So, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of that. That's all I really have to say about this kit. Like, it's it's an option worth considering, as far as I'm concerned. If you're looking for just memory to daily, who knows? Maybe you'll get ridiculously lucky, and at two volts, it'll do forty one thirty three CL twelve. Mine doesn't, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely like a solid sort of you know, cheat, well, it's an alternative to 3200 CL14 if you're willing to manually set it up. And if you're on Ryzen, then it's an alternative to 3200 CL14. If you're on Intel, this is just like, yeah, sure, go for it. Though the XMP profile really isn't that impressive in my opinion. So if you're on Intel, you'd probably still want to manually tune it. Um, but, you know, that, yeah, that, that's kind of my thoughts on it. <laughs> it's all I really have to say at this point. So yeah, hopefully this was uh, somewhat informative and it's not even that long, it's 20 minutes. Um, so I guess thanks for watching, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, then uh, I have a Patreon and there's also Teespring with like shirts, stickers, socks, posters, um, you know, buying any of those does actually help out the channel immensely. And of course, there's the Patreon if you'd like to support me directly and don't want to buy any, you know, random merch. Though, you know, you, you can become a walking advertisement for AHOC if you buy one of those shirts. <laughs> Though the logo's not like, I don't actually have like a big logo shirt, so you're not actually going to achieve that. But anyway, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.